Right. So good morning. Hope you all are doing well. Because today you're going to learn exactly why the mitochondria should be president and the chloroplast should be vice president of the cell. So as you're all are sitting here and listening to me, you guys are using energy. And all this energy is given by the mitochondria. So this, as you guys can see, that is the mitochondria and that is the chloroplast. Okay, so first of all, what is the mitochondria? The mitochondria is a double membrane cell organelle, which is found in a cell, mostly eukaryotic cells, and aids in cell signaling and differentiation and growth, also helps perform cellular respiration. But its main role is to convert nutrients into carbon dioxide and water to release energy. In fact, the mitochondria is the only place in the entire body whereby water is produced. So let's look at its structure. The structure. So this is a mitochondria. It has two membranes. The outer membrane, which is just like a covering, a skin to protect it. And then the inner membrane, which folds to form the structure known as cristae. This helps to improve its efficiency to produce the maximum amount of energy. Inside the cristae, you have the matrix, which basically has fluid, which has DNA. So we have our own DNA and don't need the nucleus, so they're not really important. In fact, even prokaryotes, they don't really have a nucleus, so that just tells us that we don't really need it. Moving on to the next slide. So how was it formed? So in fact, the mitochondria's formation not explains how the mitochondria was formed, but also the first eukaryotic cell, which we are all made of. So what happened was there was two prokaryotes, an archaeobacteria and a bacteria, and one took in the other. And instead of digesting it and eating it up, it just let it live there, and that became the first mitochondria, which formed the first eukaryotic cell. So as you guys can also see, the first eukaryote was formed 2.7 billion years ago, but the first prokaryote was formed 3.8 billion years ago. So why did it take this long? And that is because of the mitochondria's energy. So what happened is the prokaryote, as you can see, is really, really small compared to the eukaryote. So for it to get bigger, it needs more proteins. For it to have more proteins, the ribosome needs more energy, and that can be only given by the mitochondria. So for the ribosome to work, it also needs us. So it's pretty much dependent on us as well. So it took the energy that we gave, therefore formed the first eukaryotic cell. Moving on. Remember, mitochondria's name in generating energy is my game. Vote for mitochondria as the president. But even though the mitochondria does so much, it doesn't do it without the chloroplast, presenting you the vice president, the chloroplast. structure and function complement one another. 
that is especially true in the chloroplast. Because the chloroplast has two membranes, like the mitochondria, and the outer membrane and the inner membrane. And the outer membrane is just surrounds the inner one. And scientists mostly hypothesize that it has two membranes because of the endosymbiotic relationship whenever the eukaryote engulfs the prokaryote. So it has its two membranes. Function of chloroplast. The main function of chloroplast. The inner membrane has the granite and the stomach. The granite is attached to thylakoids, and on each thylakoid there's chlorophyll, and that's the pigment that produces the green and produces the energy and the sugar and the photosynthesis. And the stroma is just like the matrix in the cytoplasm of the cell, except in the chloroplast. But most importantly, the chloroplasts are the food producers of the cell. The chlorophyll that sits on each thylakoid, it, it, it collects sunlight and it produces through photosynthesis sunlight, which converts into sugar and converts into energy. And through that, it releases oxygen and it makes the products for mitochondria, which are related to the endless cycle. The mitochondria makes the products that the chloroplast needs and the chloroplast makes the products that the mitochondria need. So it's just an endless beneficial cycle, how they work together. This brings us back to how structure and function complement one another. Because the thylakoids are in stacks, they have more surface area, which is more possible for the chlorophyll to make more energy through photosynthesis to occur. So now you may be thinking, why is this important? Why does that make chloroplast such a big deal? Because in one way or another, all life is dependent upon chloroplast. And this brings us back to earlier when I mentioned the survival needs, nutrients and oxygen. So as you have now seen, chloroplast is the reason we have plants, food, oxygen, sugars like glucose, energy, and carbon dioxide all need to live and function like we do today. Because without chloroplasts, this little tiny underappreciated organelle, like we would not have any of this, and life would eventually cease to exist without it. And now you may be thinking, okay, I guess it's important, but so are the other organelles. They make stuff, we need them too. But how is chloroplast any better than my organelle? Well, in more ways than one, you see. Because chloroplasts are not solely dependent on any other organelle. It works coefficiently, it works with the mitochondria, but it's not completely dependent. Though they may not want to admit it, all other organelles are subsequently dependent on the ATP produced by, produced by mitochondria, produced by the sugar that I make from the chloroplast. Chloroplasts can also function independently from the parent cells because they contain their own DNA, like the mitochondria, though it does not need the nucleus or the nucleolus. And this is due to their history of once being a prokaryote, as I mentioned earlier. But most importantly, chloroplasts do not cause any diseases like any of the or other organelles. If you'd like to reference your fact sheet, Organelle has a rough ER. When this organelle is stressed, it, cause, it will malfunction, cause diabetes, inflammation, Alzheimer's, Parkinson's, and bipolar disorder. Ribosomes, when they sit uncontrollably and they mutate, they can cause bone marrow failure, anemia, and an elevated cancer risk. And the nucleus is responsible for every genetic disorder known to man because they contain their DNA, and that's how they passed on, as well as Alzheimer's and Huntington's. And the nucleolus, whenever they malfunction, they cause Huntington's and Alzheimer's and Parkinson's. But the chloroplast, it doesn't do anything. It's all active. So remember, how is life and but for chloroplast? And check into the audience. What's wrong? <laughs> I'm dying. Here, take these proteins. <laughs> Come help me, come help. Oh my goodness, I can't work under pressure. Oh, you just gave me diabetes and bipolar disorder. Oh, I'm so sorry. We need help. We, we need, need the, the nucleolus.
art class in the mitochondria. You guys are the best organelles ever. Don't forget to vote! <laughs>